Finding markets for this new product was important because although the hovercraft seemed like a good idea, it was a long way from proving itself as a viable commercial transport system or a useful military tool. To some, it seemed logical that the hovercraft should compete against the automobile. This presented one of the machine's stranger manifestations. People had been trying to come up with a viable alternative to the motor car ever since Henry Ford's first Model T came off the line. Now, at long last, at least to some hopeful designers, there seemed to be a real competitor. Looking back now, it seems a little silly, but imagination is the substance of innovation and a hovercraft could take people to places that the family car or boat would never go. Among attempts to put the hovercraft to domestic use was the Curtis Wright hovercar. It probably would have been a little bit too big to fit in the average suburban garage, but it would certainly have gone where no car had gone before. This model used its two separate fans just like the Piasecki Air Jeep did, one at the front and one at the rear. As is so often the case with certain bizarre newcomers, the Department of Defense came to the rescue. They were the only ones willing to spend the money and take the risk. From the beginning, military planners had paid close attention to the machine's development. The hovercraft was one stone that they just weren't willing to leave unturned. As the vehicles became faster and more sophisticated, their all-terrain capability was a temptation that the armed forces, customs service, and police couldn't pass up. The potential for the air-cushioned vehicle was interpreted in many ways. To the U.S. Navy, it was seen as a means of reducing water resistance to high-speed experimental craft. Years later, it would transcend the experimental and establish itself as a vital asset in combat. The first acid test of the hovercraft as a weapon of war came in the early 1960s in Vietnam. Initially, they were thought of as exotic battlefield curiosities of limited use, but gradually they would go on to reveal themselves as uniquely suited to one of the lesser known fronts of that war.